Hey guys and gals, it's me Subday Rocket and <sighs> Avengers Infinity War, which is also known as Spider-Man No! It'll be back eventually. And it was almost a year ago that I did the Infinity Stone Marathon for Avengers Infinity War, where I review every single MCU movie that had those little MacGuffins. <sighs> So, with the release of Avengers, no, I'm still not calling it Endgame, coming out later on in April, am I gonna do another marathon? Of course I am! Introducing the Iron Man Marathon, where I review every single Iron Man movie. Well, it's only three, so... Yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a short marathon here. So, of course, we're gonna start off this marathon strong with... Before we begin this review, I actually want to talk about my history with Iron Man. My first MCU movie was actually Avengers, and then after we watched the movie, my dad told me there were separate movies for the other, you know, the heroes in that film. So of course you got Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. Well, yeah, my dad doesn't really know that there's actually a whole movie that is a part of the MCU, but that doesn't really matter nowadays, so yeah, we don't need to go into that, so yeah, my dad gave me the choice of those three heroes, and I choose Iron Man. I didn't know anything about the MCL. I didn't know that it's a, like a big thing back then, a big deal. So yeah, I just choose Iron Man because it looks cool. And I really enjoyed those films, both of them. We'll get into Iron Man 2 eventually, but yeah. Do I still like them today? Well, I have watched it recently and all that, and now we're here to, you know, review the film. So without further ado, let's get into it and see how, the, how does it stand up today as a standalone film, and as well as a, you know, a good introduction. Let's see if it's actually you know a good introduction to you know the MCU. So without further ado, enough talking and let's get into it. Cue the spoiler warning. So we first start off with some very tense logos. Seriously, even the Marvel Studios logo is kind of tense. It really gives the feeling that this movie is gonna be a serious movie. And then we cut to a sandy area where there's just wind blowing and nothing else. And then, it hits you. This is the first time we get to see Tony Stark for the first time. And I feel like this is actually a pretty good introduction scene. The sequence where Tony Stark hangs out with the soldiers is actually a pretty good scene to show you what Tony Stark is all about. And it's a pretty fun scene too. But the fun doesn't last because all the soldiers later on get brutally killed. <laughs> well, talk about a shift in tone. Anyway, Tony Stark manages to survive, well, for a while anyways, until a missile came in and he does the dumbest move ever, yet it became the most legendary move ever, which is running away from the missile, but running away at the same direction where the missile is. What a legendary moment. I really like that the Iron Man logo in the opening is actually have the same font like in the Avengers openings. It really shows you how important Iron Man is to the MCU. We go back earlier before the legendary moment happened, where we get to see a presentation during an award ceremony about Tony Stark. Well, the inventor side of Tony Stark anyway. And then we found out that Tony Stark wasn't able to attend the award ceremony because he was actually busy with his other side. It's a really neat way to show both sides of Tony Stark. Fun fact, the music that's playing in the casino is actually the theme song for the old Iron Man TV show. <laughs> Anyways, after some inappropriate stuff that I cannot show on this channel, so enjoy me dancing right here, we get our first look at Tony Stark's house. Yep, that's his house over there. This is the first time we also get to see Pepper Potts. It's really interesting to see all these iconic characters in their first appearance form. Of course, as I mentioned before, we got Pepper Potts, we also got Happy beforehand, and of course we got Rhodes. Yep, that's definitely 100% Rhodes. Nothing wrong here. All jokes aside, I kinda miss the old roads. Sure, the new roads is fine and all, but looking back at it, I kinda miss the old roads. Back then, they kinda feel like they kinda acted that Rhodes is kinda like the opposite to Tony, which makes it interesting for him being good friends with Tony Stark himself. 
So yeah, I kind of feel like that was a cool idea to have in you know the Iron Man franchise. But of course, we they had to replace him and all that. And now we got this new Rhodes, you know, played by you know Don Chadell, I think. I think what that's his name. I think of course I got Don correct, but not sure how you pronounce the last name. But anyways, like the new Rhodes is fine. He kind of has the same thing like the old Rhodes, but yeah, it's like it's not really that much like you know the original. Later on, Tony Stark gives a weapon presentation to soldiers. And man, this is such a badass scene. I really like this scene. I wish I have a moment like this. Is it better to be feared or respected? And I say, is it too much to ask for both? For your consideration, the Jericho. Ah, 2008, where cell phones existed. Uh, hey, Tony, I'm sorry, this is the fun beat, the humdrum beat back there. Nice job. See you back there. Luckily, Tony Stark survives the attack thanks to a change of heart. Literally. Ugh! That looks ugly. Can you change that heart, please? Can you change it? Ah, that, that's a better heart. That's a better looking heart right there. So apparently, these bad guys right here want Tony Stark to make a weapon for them. But of course, Tony Stark ain't having none of that, so he decides to make the iconic Mark I to do the greatest escape ever. But unfortunately, with a cost of one life. A lot of people say that the MCU didn't have a big death until, you know, Yondu came along in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2. But I have to disagree. This man helped Tony Stark change his perspective on the world and of course this leads him into becoming the Iron Man we know and love today. So I feel like this is actually a pretty important and big death that we all should, you know, take an account of, you know, being Marvel fans. Once Tony Stark manages to escape and manages to get back to America, he has two things in mind. A press conference and an American cheeseburger from Burger King. Really, that little but product placement, that ain't gonna influence me. What? Tony Stark announces to the world that he will stop making weapons for the military in order to focus on a brand new special project. And we all know what that is. But before that, we have this little fun scene where Pepper Potts tries to help Tony Stark with his heart problems. The relationship between Pepper and Tony are pretty slow in this movie. Which I feel like it's alright, I kinda feel like it fits the movie well. It doesn't need to be fast paced or anything, but yeah, I kinda feel like it really works with this film. Well, that's enough of that, let's get into that special project. <laughs> Man, nobody uses that transition anymore in movies. Now we go to the construction of the Iron Man suit, Mark II. This scene has become quite iconic. In fact, most of the scenes in this film have become quite iconic in the MCU. I'm not sure it's just me watching the movie several times back in the day, but most of the scenes here are pretty memorable. When Tony Stark did a flight test on the suit, he realized that the suit has a bit of an icing problem when he reached high skies. This leads into Tony Stark painting the suit golden and hot rod red. Perhaps if you intend to visit other planets, we should improve the exosystems. Ha! Huh. Like he will ever visit other planets in the future. Not long after the paint dries, Tony Stark founds out that, well, in simple words, people are in danger. This leads into Tony Stark suiting up to save the day. I miss the old-fashioned way of suiting up. Sure, nanotech is cool and all, but I really miss the times where Tony Stark has to put every single part of the Iron Man suit just, you know, on his body itself, you know, everything just connects together and all that. I really miss those days, it's just so satisfying. After the suit up, we get into an action sequence, and it's actually a pretty good action sequence. It really shows you what Iron Man is capable of, both in land and air. This is also where Tony Stark reveals his identity to Rhodey, but that's not all that has been revealed. We also found out that Obadiah Stane, the guy who works with Tony Stark, is actually our first main Marvel bad guy. You rarely see me talk about the villains in the Marvel franchise, but the thing is, most of them are kind of generic. Well, most of them anyways, of course we have Thanos, Loki, and of course Ghost as well nowadays, so... Yeah, the Marvel villains are getting better nowadays, but back then they're kind of generic, and it's kind of the same thing with Obadiah here. But they make up for it with his personality. When he's on the screen as the villain, he's actually pretty scary and menacing as well, and it can really give you chills. Well, until he wears the suit, and he got lines like this. Down. Collateral damage, Tony. 
the suit looks scary and menacing itself, so I don't understand why they didn't keep the whole menacing and scary part itself on, you know, Obadiah Stane and give lines like these. I, I don't understand this. What, why did they do this? So yeah, he has a suit of his own, so Pepper Potts actually gets help from Agent Coulson and S.H.I.E.L.D. itself, so yeah, this is the first appearance of those guys. But S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are not enough. I mean, come on, Obadiah passed through them like it's nothing. So Iron Man suits up to save the day. Damn. Next time, baby. Huh. Of course, this leads into a fight with Iron Man and the Iron Monger. And it's actually a pretty good fight. But Iron Man can't defeat it alone, so he gets help from the first ever MCU Sky Beam. And just like that, Obadiah is down. Or is it? I kind of have the feeling that he could be actually still alive ever since I see Avengers Infinity War and the whole thing with Red Skull. We all thought he was dead in Captain America, the first Avenger, and then we see him in Infinity War and all that. So this gives me a feeling that maybe Obadiah is still alive. I mean, we didn't see him, you know, disintegrating into bits or something. He just falls into the arc reactor and that's it. Who knows? Maybe he's actually alive and maybe we'll get to see him in Avengers Endgame? Maybe? I don't know. Just a little prediction. Save it for the less predicted, Daniel. Of course, this is before Skybeams become an average day in the universe. So of course, there's a press conference. And this is where Tony Stark gives the iconic line. Truth is... I am Iron Man. That's the end of the movie, so what do I think of it? Well, it's actually a pretty good start for the MCU. It really hints that there's actually more to this story, but it doesn't really like, you know, do like, you know, hey, Thanos is coming soon or anything. It doesn't shout out loud and, you know, there's more to come. It just really feels like there's actually more to come, and I really appreciate that they managed to do that. As a standalone movie though, it's, it's not bad either. It just has a nice simple plot. It's basically Tony Stark looking at himself, and making a change. Funny enough, that's actually the same plot as the Lego Batman movie. I don't know, maybe that's the reason why, you know, Batman mentioned Iron Man's name in that movie. I don't know, maybe that could be the case, but yeah, anyways, that's all for this review. So with that said, alright guys and gals, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and you know, this first part of the Iron Man marathon. Of course, next up is Iron Man 2, but before that, we're gonna take a little detour because at the time of this recording, of course, Captain Marvel's almost out. So of course I want to review that, and I also want to do a Let's Predicted video before that, so yeah, stay tuned for that of course, so of course, until then, rock it on! always gives me chills, especially with the part where Nick Fury says Mr. Stark, you've become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. You get it? Because Iron Man's the start of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You get it? Yeah, I know that I did say that the Iron Man film didn't really, you know, hint it that much, you know, like putting it into our faces and all that. But look, I kind of feel like it's not that much here. And besides, I feel like it's really nice to have this here. It really keeps people wondering like, oh my god, they're gonna do something else or what, what's this all about or something like that. I feel like at least something has to be there to excite people, so I'm, I'm glad that they add this in. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you for watching this video. I'll rock it on. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative.